Good morning, Tree of Life, and welcome to our worship today. We, today we celebrate the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. On Tuesday this past week, 20 plus of us, our children and our adults, gathered in the lawn in front of Fellowship Hall to paint encouragement rocks under the tutelage of Jana Maxson, thanks to her. The rocks are now planted in our rock garden. We hope you'll drive by at some point and check out the creativity of our children. We're celebrating a pile of birthdays this week. Emily Cole, Mike Cole's daughter, turned, turns 39 today. Nora Kirshner, 57, also today. Max Leisure turned five on June 23rd. Mark Romanak will turn 30 on June 29th. Zoe Sremsich turned 16 on June 19th. Paul Sremsich, her father, turned 55 on June 15th. Maya Weaver turns two today. Riley Thompson, 14 tomorrow. Lincoln Wilkinson turns three today. DJ Johns turns six, turn 16 on June 13th. Sarah Johns, his sister, turned 23 yesterday, June 27th. Emma Johns, his other sister, turns 20 tomorrow, June 29th. Our grandson, Camden Ashoka, will turn two on July 6th. And our granddaughter, Gabrielle Guy, turns six on June 26th. Happy birthday to each. We're also celebrating anniversaries. Wendy Harrison's parents, Phil and Diane, celebrated 50 years on June 20th. Bob and Marla Hansen celebrate 45 years today. Sean and Elizabeth Kleiber Black celebrated their first anniversary on June 22nd. Steve and Pam Forney celebrated 33 years together on June 20th. Happy anniversary. We prepare for our worship with the prelude.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Train up a 
first reading is from the 28th chapter of Jeremiah 27. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all of the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all of the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of the prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, bless this word to our hearing this day, that we hear and live the words of welcome as urged by Jesus. Open our hearts to our neighbors, welcoming them as we have been welcomed by you through Christ. Amen. 
Pastor Liddy Barlow shares an experience she had while visiting an Orthodox church. This year, on the Wednesday of Holy Week, I went to a small Antiochian Orthodox church for a service of holy unction. I slipped into a pew, a woman in a clerical collar, clearly a stranger. At last, the time of the anointing came. The priest explained the rite. Only Orthodox Christians may receive the oil, he said. It is a sacrament, and receiving sacraments implies theological assent. But he added, his eyes finding mine, if there are any non-Orthodox visitors in the room who would like to come forward, we do have some myrrh and would be glad to anoint you with that. Gratefully, I joined the line of the faithful, presenting the priest with my open palms. He swapped one oil for the other. Thank you for coming, he said, as he used a cotton swab to paint tiny crosses on my hands, my wrists, my forehead. The scent lingered as I returned to my pew. I grieve the divisions in Christ's church, our petty squabbles and genuine grievances have distracted us from our mission, squandered our resources, broken hearts, and ruined lives. It's a tragedy that we cannot come to one communion table, a shame that one, our belief in one holy Catholic and apostolic church remains just an abstract ideal. Our divisions have made us strangers. But even within this brokenness, there is deep blessing. Because we are strangers, we can welcome each other. Because we are not yet at home with another, we can extend hospitality. And in that welcome, Christ can be present in our midst, in the faces of our fellow Christians, as we bear his image to one another. Our gospel lesson invites us to ask all of these questions about the quality of the welcome that we offer to one another within the body of Christ the church. It goes on to suggest that while we might find some comfort gathering only with those whose names sound like our names or whose education or book bank accounts resemble. There is a cost to the kinds of exclusive behavior that too much of the church has tolerated for too long. Jesus addresses the issue in the most personal of terms. He describes the love that families hold for one another, the tenderness with which we care for parents and for our children. That tenderness and compassion must be our model for loving all who come into our lives. When we welcome the stranger, we welcome none other, none other than Christ. These faith and life lessons may not always mesh with our own ideas of hospitality, which usually have nothing to do with strangers. We live in a culture that places great emphasis on making our houses comfortable and inviting. But the surge in home improvement has done more for the bottom line of Lowe's or Home Depot than it has for the actual practice of hospitality. Guilty as charged, Lowe's and our contractors have definitely benefited from our recent foray into finally refreshing our backyard after 33 years. But in the midst of a housing crisis, millions of carefully furnished guest bedrooms sit mostly forgotten until it comes time to dust. In the midst of skyrocketing unemployment, in the midst of privilege for some that prevents many others from moving beyond their poverty, no wonder then that the fear of the stranger, the immigrant, the homeless, is so very real 
in so much of our public discourse and policy. That most welcoming of all people who joyfully, gently invited everyone into his neighborhood, Fred Rogers, wrote this. Imagine what our real neighborhoods would be like if each of us offered as a matter of course just one kind word to another person. There have been so many stories about the lack of courtesy, the impatience of today's world, road rage, and even now, restaurant rage. Sometimes all it takes is one kind word to nourish another person. Think of the ripple effect that can be created when we nourish someone. One kind, empathetic word has a wonderful way of turning into many. In our world today, particularly our own country, where it is essential that we readjust a born and bred concept of welcoming that in many cases has shown itself to be unwelcoming, in fact, hateful and destructive, we need to think of the ripple effect that can be created when we nourish someone. One kind, empathetic word has a wonderful way of turning into many. And that is just a start. Think of the ripple effect when we stand strong, each one of us, against bigotry, acts of hatred, societal expect acceptance of poverty, and lack of education for some, for many, while others live the American dream. Remember, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Thanks be to God. Amen. Here as one we claim
confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.